Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hold up, I know, you're probably thinking, dude, this is the most clickbait thumbnail ever. What's wrong with you? Well, it's actually not, because we're gonna talk about it in the video. That makes it not clickbait, right? So, if Rockstar gave you guys the choice and you had to do this to either kill Tommy Versetti, Carl Johnson, or Nico Bellic, and you had to kill one of these guys, who would you kill? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments. And the reason for that is because today we're talking about some of the hardest choices we've ever had to make in the Grand Theft Auto series. And this is something for the most part that was implemented way back in Grand Theft Auto 4. So it's kind of new to the series. But uh, it's player determined choices. Meaning you can A, save this guy or B, kill this guy and let him be. And this has kind of trickled into GTA 5 a little bit. As we know the ending, we have to make a pretty important decision on who we want to save versus who we want to kill. I'm not going to spoil that because I'm sure some of you guys haven't played the ending to GTA 5. But nonetheless, for the sake of this video, we are just going to single out GTA 4 and talk about this game because April is actually GTA 4's birth month and in just a week, or two, give or take. GTA 4 is going to be 10 years old, which is crazy. Probably older than some of you guys watching the video. So, with that said, if we can break 2,000 likes on this video, I will continue this over to GTA 5, and we will do a hardest choices you've ever had to make in GTA 5 video. But with that said, well, here we are with GTA 4 and some of the hardest choices we've ever had to make in this game. First up, we've got Playboy X and Dwayne and the mission, The Holland Place. So, Playboy X and Dwayne are two very cool characters within GTA 4 that we come across. We get to know them a little bit and a little bit about their backstories and life. And Playboy X actually introduces us to Dwayne, who is at one point his mentor. He taught Playboy X a lot about running the streets and the drug trade and things like that. But he ended up going to prison and he had been in prison for a very, very long time. But upon getting released from prison and kind of jumping back into the criminal underworld in Liberty City, that Playboy X somewhat, you know, is running at this point because once Dwayne went to jail, Playboy X kind of took over Dwayne's role. Well, Dwayne comes back, he's out of jail, and he's trying to take back some of this power that he once had that Playboy X has. But Playboy X is so power hungry that we end up having to choose who we want to kill in the mission the Holland play, as I mentioned before. So there's two different options, obviously. There is kill Dwayne or kill Playboy X. And Dwayne is a very cool guy. If you kill him, it's very sad because he talks about how he thought Nico was a true friend because Dwayne and Nico are a they're, they're just alike and very similar uh, in a lot of things. Their thought patterns, their morals way of life, and things like that. So, Playboy X asks us to kill his best friend, Dwayne. And if so, well, we receive $25,000 from Playboy X, who, remember, wanted us to kill his best friend, Dwayne, because he doesn't want Dwayne taking over again and having all this power that Playboy X has. But after we kill Dwayne, we get a phone call from Playboy X, and he is mad. He calls us a cold-blooded killer and tells us that he doesn't want to see us anymore because we killed his mentor. And then we actually have to kill Playboy X because he's trying to kill us for killing his mentor. It's just a big old love triangle, basically, that doesn't end well. However, if we actually kill Playboy X instead of Dwayne, well, we actually get his penthouse. We get a super cool Easter egg outfit, which is Claude's from GTA 3, as well as we have Dwayne pretty much as a lifelong friend. We can hang out with him. We can call him. And overall, um, I've played GTA 4 many times throughout the years, and I have never once killed Dwayne, uh, aside from just getting footage for this video. So let me know down below, have you always killed Playboy X, or have you always killed Dwayne? Moving on, we have got Francis and Derek McCreary, two of the McCreary brothers, and in the mission Blood Brothers, we are given the alternative or ultimatum to kill Francis, or kill Derek. And I'm not sure if those were the right words to use. Ultimatum, alternative. But we're just given the choice, basically. So, Francis is kind of the black sheep of the family. He's a cop. For the most part, he's a crooked cop. Meaning he does a lot of illegal things. 
And if we actually kill Francis, well, nothing actually happens. We don't get anything from it because Derek, the other brother, is poor. He wants us to kill Francis just because of the way he is. And he's just a burden to the family, basically. So, uh, nothing happens. We don't get any money. But Packy's like status for us increases because, really, nobody liked Francis. He had just strayed away from the family. And, like I said before, he's just a black sheep. But if we actually kill Derek McCreary, this alcoholic, this druggie, who just sleeps in the parks like Francis wants us to, well, we actually get $20,000, which isn't bad for killing some dude's brother, right? as well as the ability to remove a three-star wanted level in the game. So he's essentially playing the role of kind of like Lester in GTA 5. When you have a wanted level, if you want to call Lester, uh, he can remove that for you. Francis can kind of do the same thing, but it makes more sense because Francis is a cop. So he can call all his buddies and just be like, hey, you guys leave this crazy Yugoslavian Serbian dude alone who's on a killing spree. Uh, he's my friend. Moving on, we've got Darko Brevik in the mission That Special Someone. So this is actually a special mission in GTA 4. And if you don't know who Darko Brevik is, he's the guy that sold out Nico's squad to enemy forces for $1,000 to fund his heroin addiction during the Yugoslavian Wars, like 10 years before GTA 4 takes place. Nico was a part of this. He was a soldier. And after this and after Nico's squad was killed, everybody but Nico... Darko and a man named Florian lived. Everybody else died. And for the next decade, Nico would spend this hunting down Darko and Florian to just find out which one of these guys sold out the squad and killed all of these friends uh, of Nico Bellic. It was like his childhood friends in this squad. And he wants to ex exact revenge. And that's the reason really Nico moves to Liberty City, aside from them good old American titties, as Roman would say. So... We've got two options. We can kill Darko Brevik, or we can let him live. And if you actually kill Darko, there's a really cool execution scene that takes place. It's very gory. And Nico describes himself as feeling empty for killing Darko. And the whole time, Roman is begging us not to do it because it's not going to make him feel better. Uh, but if we kill Darko, yeah, we get the cool execution scene. But in the end, Darko wins because as he's dying, he utters Thank you to Nico Bellic because Nico put him out of his misery. However, if we let Darko live, Nico feels way better. He talks about this and he says that he knew if he killed Darko, it wouldn't change the past. It wouldn't change anything and he would probably still have all that contempt and hatred. So if we let Darko live, he loses because he stays alive and he just drowns in his own sorrow, misery, guilt, and just horrible life. And last up, we have got Dmitry Raskolov, one of the antagonists, if not just the main antagonist of GTA 4. This guy is a manipulating psychopath. So, Dmitry comes to us in the beginning of the game as we work for a guy named Mikhail Faustin, who is, or who Dmitry has worked for for many years. And Dmitry has us kill Mikhail Faustin. Dmitry takes over all of these businesses and this drug trade and things like that. And, well, he ends up selling us out later on into the game to a guy named Ray Bulgarin over these diamonds, which most of GTA 4's story is revolved around. And not only does he betray us by selling us out to Ray Bulgarin, he also burns our safe house down, he burns Roman's taxi company down, and to make matters worse, he actually kidnaps Roman. So, Dimitri isn't really a nice guy. And in the ending to GTA 4... Thankfully, we get to kill this guy because you've got two options. You can do this deal ending where we participate in a heroin deal for Jimmy Pecorino, whom we're working for at the time, and we can get paid for this. And Dimitri is kind of this middleman in this heroin deal. Or we can take the revenge ending where we still do this deal, but we actually rebel and we kill Dimitri and we get payback for everything he did to us and all the pain he caused us and all the torment and things like that. So thankfully, either way, we get to kill this freaking crazy guy. But sadly, GTA 4 doesn't have any happy endings because regardless, Roman at his wedding, either he dies or Kate, our girlfriend, dies at the hands of an assassin or at the hands of Jimmy Pegorino. So with that said... 
So with that said, that's actually some of the hardest choices in GTA 4 we have had to make. So Rockstar, why you do this to us? GTA 4 was such a great game, but man, there were some pretty hard choices in that game. So if you guys would like to see me continue this little mini-series, I guess, with GTA 5 and some of the hardest choices in that game, well, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If we could break 2,000 likes, that would be awesome, but I'm a little skeptical on whether or not you guys are cool enough to do that. I'm only kidding. I love you guys. Thank you for the support. Uh, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you never miss out on another daily video game upload. We're on the road to 400,000 subscribers. And with that said, my name is Zach Cox. Thank you guys for stopping by and I will see you all in the next video.